Hi there. Now in this tutorial what I want to do is introduce you to a particular type of angular measurement. It's called radians. Already we should be familiar with degrees, one degree being one three hundred and three sixtieth of a complete turn. But what about a radian? What's that? Well to demonstrate this I've got a circle here of radius r and if we were to go from, say, this point here, round the arc of the circle, and if this distance was exactly the same as the distance r, it will take me on this circle to about there, this distance then along the arc being r. And if I was to go from here back to the centre of the circle, then this angle in here is defined as one radian. And we write a little c for radians. So c is used to denote radians, if you don't want to write the word radians, that is. So one radian is defined then as the angle subtended at the centre of a circle of radius r by an arc of length r. Now the next question is, how many radians do you think fit in one complete turn, the equivalent of 360 degrees. Well looking at this diagram and just trying to map out these sectors round the circle, how many do you think there will be? Well there's just over six. We've got the one here and then two, three, four, five, six and a bit. And that would mean that if I wanted to work out what this angle was roughly in degrees, it would just be a question of dividing 360 degrees up into six sections. So it's going to be a little less than 60 degrees. We'll come to that in a moment. But I'd like to know exactly how many radians fit in a complete turn of 360 degrees. I can see it's a little over 6. But to do this, all I've got to do is find how many times I can fit the radius into the circumference. So if we're looking then at the number of radians in one turn of 360 degrees, it's going to be equal to the circumference divided by the radius. Well, the circumference is given by 2 pi r. And if we divide this by the radius r, then you can see that we can cancel out r both top and bottom of that fraction. And that gives us 2 pi. And this is the exact value of the number of radians then in one turn. If I wanted to know what it was approximately, taking pi to be say 3.1, 2 times 3.1 gives me 6.2. So you can see there is just slightly more than 6 radians then in one complete turn. So this is something then that you ought to remember. Okay, so we just bored that off like so. And we'll just recap this here, that 360 degrees then is the equivalent, or is identical, to 2 pi radians. So I put the little c there. So I said to you, how many degrees were there in one radian? Well, if we imagine there were six sections round there, clearly there's a bit more than six, but if there were six sections there, it would be 360 divided by six, giving me 60 degrees. But there's slightly more than six sections, there's exactly two pi sections. So if I wanted to work out then the number of degrees per radian, all I've got to do is take 360 degrees and divide it by two pi. And what do we get? Well, we get an approximate answer which is 57 degrees. So Again, it's a good idea just to get a rough idea then what a radian is when expressed in degrees. It's not exactly 57 degrees, but it's just roughly 57 degrees. 
Now you're going to be called upon to work out some angles, giving them in terms of pi. And to do this, let's just go through one or two. We've got 360 degrees is identical to two pi radians. Now if I was to divide both sides by two, then clearly 180 degrees must be the equivalent of pi radians. Okay, just slightly more than three radians. One, two, three and a bit you can see here. And if I was to divide both sides here by two, again I get 90 degrees is identical to pi upon two radians. And I kind of like to think of this as a simple diagram and you'll see why very shortly where I take half a turn and I split it in half, giving me 90 degrees. Two sections then, pi divided by 2. When it comes to 45 degrees, I see this as taking my straight line, turning about this straight line and splitting it into four divisions, something like that. So 45 degrees is the equivalent of taking pi radians, 180 degrees, pi radians, and dividing it up into four sections, pi divided by four. You'd obviously get the same result if you just divided 90 by two and half pi upon two, quarter pi. Another common one is 30 degrees. And when I'm dealing with 30 degrees, again, I think of pi, or 180 degrees, and I cut this up into six divisions, something like this, okay? So when it comes to 30 degrees, I see this as pi divided by six radians. Now where am I going with this? Well, there's going to be other angles that you're going to be asked to give exact values for. And here's just a selection. 270 degrees, 225 degrees, 210 and 120 degrees. What are these going to be identical to? Well, with a little bit of practice, you'll realize that these angles and others are multiples of some of these angles here. So when I'm given 270 degrees, for instance, what I'm thinking of is a diagram like this. I see 90 degrees as being pi upon 2 radians. So just mark that in as pi upon 2 radians. So I've got my diagram something like this splitting pi up into two parts. So when I want 270 degrees I just count off. This is the first multiple of pi upon 2, 180 degrees is the second multiple, and 270 degrees is the third multiple. So I've got 270 degrees equals 3 lots of pi upon 2. 3 pi upon 2 radians then. Now when it comes on to 225 degrees, I see this as being a multiple of the 45 degrees. So I'm thinking of a diagram, a circle like this, split into divisions of 45 degrees. And we can see that that half a turn, 180 degrees or pi radians, is split up into four sections. So 45 degrees is the equivalent then of pi upon four radians. And so when it comes to 225 degrees, which is a multiple of 45 degrees, all I'm doing is counting off in my mind as I see this diagram, one, two, three, four, five. So I see 225 degrees as being the fifth multiple of pi upon four. So 225 degrees is five pi upon four radians. If it was 315 degrees, I'd just carry on as 6, 7. So I would have 315 degrees as 7 pi upon 4. 
So it's well worth trying to remember your multiples of 45 degrees. Now just give you a moment to possibly think about this one, 210 degrees. You might like to pause the video at this stage and just see if you can work out what the exact value of that would be in terms of pi. Okay, welcome back. So, did you find that it was 7 pi over 6? Well, if not, here's the diagram that I would be thinking of. It's based on multiples of 30 degrees. 30 degrees is pi upon 6. I'm splitting my 180 degrees, the equivalent of pi radians, up into 6 divisions. And so, when I count off to 210 degrees round here, we've got 30 degrees is 1, 62, 93 and so on, 4, 5, 6 and 7 for 210. So 210 degrees then is the same as 7 pi over 6 radians. Okay? Now I've got another one here, 120 degrees. You might like to try that one. So I'll give you a moment again just to pause the video. Okay, well, did you get 120 degrees to be two-thirds pi radians? Well, that can easily be done from this diagram here because 120 degrees is a multiple of 30 degrees. You can see it round here. It's the fourth multiple, so you could argue it's 4 pi over 6 but that cancels down to two-thirds pi. But when I'm doing 120 degrees, I don't tend to see it like this. I see it as being a multiple of 60 degrees. So I'm thinking of a diagram like this, where I take my 180 degrees and split it up into three divisions. Each division were 60 degrees, or the equivalent of pi upon three radians. So again, when I step off to 120 degrees, this is the first multiple, and this is the second multiple of 60 degrees. So it's going to be two lots of pi upon three radians. Okay, well that brings us now towards the end of this video, but what I would certainly encourage you to do is try and memorize these multiples of angles of 30 degrees, 45 degrees up here, and say 90 degrees, so that when it comes to expressing any of these angles in radians as exact values in terms of pi, you should have no problem at all. Okay?